there were four people sharing a berth on a train traveling from Paris to Madrid. There was a beautiful young lady, her grandmother, a young lieutenant, and his commanding officer. The train went through a dark tunnel, it was pitch black, and every, no one could see anything, but everyone heard two things, a kiss and a slap. And then they emerged from the tunnel, and everyone uh, sat there stone-faced, trying not to look at each other. And the uh, beautiful young lady was thinking to herself, I am so glad that young lieutenant kissed me, but I'm sorry that my grandma slapped him. And the grandma was thinking, I'm sorry that that lieutenant slap or kiss my granddaughter but I'm glad she had the good sense to slap him and the colonel was thinking well I'm glad that the young lieutenant had the good sense to kiss that pretty girl but I'm sorry that she slapped me by mistake and the young lieutenant was uh, thinking something completely different he's the only one that knew what was going on he thought what a great day I got to kiss a pretty girl and slap the colonel and get away with it There is a way (laughs) that seemeth unlikely. We're in the middle of our sermon series on the real God, and you've heard uh, already announcements about that. Of course, you've been following, and and you see in your bulletin that we're right in the middle of this series. And the premise of the series is the way you, the way I see God, determines our whole relationship with Him. In fact, it determines the trajectory of our lives. And so we've been trying to follow the attributes of God to see the real God. And so we've looked at his goodness. We, we looked at his sovereignty and his holiness. And today you already know the subject because it's in your bulletin and you saw the video. We're talking about the wisdom of God. Um, and, and I want to um, define wisdom for us uh, several ways. But first I want to kind of define it the Hanfield way, you might say. How we've talked about the ways of God in the past. So, so in your notes, uh, here's how I'm going to put it. There is a way the kingdom works. There's a way God works, and it's usually, my, my experience is, it's usually the opposite of what I think. I, I don't see it coming. There is a way the kingdom works, and we call that His wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1.25, uh, actually, Curtis quoted this at the beginning of the service. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans, and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. And the writer of Proverbs puts it this way, Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listens to others. So there is a way that God works, and it's usually, uh, my experience is, it's a surprise. It's counterintuitive to what I thought. Of course, when we uh, think about wisdom, we define it this way. Uh, We think of using our knowledge and our experience to make wise decisions. Chip Ingram, who is the writer and developer of this series, defines the wisdom of God this way. God will bring about the best possible results by the best possible means for the most possible people for the longest possible time. I think that's a good definition, but let let me say I hasten to say, that does not give us the license to do dumb things like text while we drive. Like you saw in the opening video. Now, God can use our dumb things for His glory, and we call that His sovereignty. But the point is, He sees the whole picture. He sees the future. He sees the past. He sees all the ins and outs. And there is a way that the kingdom works. So here's the question. I put it this way in your notes. How do we access God's wisdom? If we want to to, uh, understand the attributes of God, if we want to see the real God so that we can love Him and walk with Him and and live our lives victorious, then we want to, to see what the wisdom of God is really like. But we also want to grasp His wisdom for ourselves so we can live in His wisdom. So the way I ask it in your notes is how can we, how do we access God's wisdom? And Paul writes in, also in 1 Corinthians, but people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it 
for only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. So how can we get a hold of His wisdom? Or a, uh, we, we might put it this way, how do we access God's divine wisdom? So real quick, divine wisdom begins with those who fear Him. Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the, the beginning, King James says, of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. So, uh, wait a minute, Pastor. We've talked about the goodness of God and the sovereignty of God, the holiness of God. And now you're saying that we're supposed to be afraid of Him? No, no, no. When the Old Testament, uh, when the whole Bible talks about fearing God, it's not talking about being uh, scared. It's talking about reverence and respect. It's talking about being in awe. Several years ago, Marion elected a new mayor, happened to be a member of our church. And right after he was uh, inaugurated as the mayor, he invited some community leaders into the city chambers, and he invited me to come in. And I was talking to him at the beginning, just he and I, and I was saying, well, Ron, it's good to see you. Ron, thanks for having me in. Ron this, Ron that. And then the people started gathering in, and he started the meeting, and people started saying, Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Mr. Mayor, what do you think about this? Mr. Mayor, may I be recognized? And I thought, boy, I'm so glad no one heard me. He's Mr. Mayor now. I need to call him Mr. Mayor. Especially in, in the setting like this. Doesn't matter that he's been in my house and I've been in his house. He's Mr. Mayor. Doesn't matter that he and his wife Carol took care and I skiing one time. <laughs> he's Mr. Mayor. I have to respect the position as well as the person. But when it comes to fearing God, uh, we also revere his person as the God of the universe. I can call Jesus any old time. Yeah, we can. <laughs> and he wants to be intimately involved with us, but he's also God. And so that's why the proverb writer says, here's how wisdom begins in our respect of God. Divine wisdom begins with those who fear God. And secondly... Divine wisdom grows in those who study God's Word. Read God's Word, study God's Word. So Paul tells Timothy, you've been taught the Holy Scriptures from your childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. I wonder how much time you spend studying God's Word in a day. Is it a full minute? <laughs> Is it uh, 10 minutes? I mean, if, you, if you didn't have to work, uh, if you, you're not uh, sleeping, you're not eating, you're not uh, doing the dishes and mowing the lawn, all the things that we have to do as, as just people, uh, do you find time to study God's Word? Because we find time for uh, all kinds of things. So here's uh, Proverbs 2. 1 to 6. It's on the screen behind me. And the writer of Proverbs here is trying to exhort his, uh, his or her protege to study what would be helpful. And I've left some words uh, blank on purpose. Let's see if we can figure out how to fill this in. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to social media. Concentrate on Twitter. Cry out for celebrity values. And ask for opinion polls from others. No, that's not what it says, does it? We could go on. There's, there's uh, other words we could put in there. But let me, let me fill in the, the blanks for you. For the Lord, whoops. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So this is not a sermon against Facebook. Please don't go home and say, well, I heard I'm not supposed to be on Facebook anymore. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you can't do that. This is not against what you do in your leisure time. I'm just saying... Can you find time to study God's Word?
can you find some time? I, I thought of this uh, the other day. Uh, have you ever sat in a movie theater and you're waiting for the, your movie to start and there's all the previews and so forth? Have you ever looked around you? The lights are up at that point. It's not dark. One time I just looked around and I said to Karen, everyone here is on their phone. Everyone. What are they looking at on their phone? I, I guess I'm naive. What, what is so interesting that you, have, you can't be bored for 30 seconds? Are they playing Minesweeper? Are they checking their Facebook page? Are, are they looking up the scores? I, I, maybe it's all good stuff, but, but here's a thought. Next time you're waiting in line at Starbucks or at Culver's or the next time you're, uh, you're in a theater, get your phone out. Oh, Pastor Tim said we can get our phone out and hit your Bible app. Here's a thought. And read a scripture. You'll just blend in with, the, with everyone else, but you're reading scripture. I have a feeling that may be a little bit more valuable. Just a thought. Just try it. But the point uh, uh, of our texts this morning, our multiple texts, is that we grow in wisdom when we study God's Word. There's lots of things we can do with our time. It's, oh, it's fine. I'm not putting anything down. I'm just saying the wise man, the wise woman, finds wisdom studying God's word and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding for the Lord grants wisdom and that leads us to our third point and it's real simple it, this is a, a promise from the book of James divine wisdom comes to those who ask and James says if you need wisdom ask if you need wisdom this week ask and he will give it to you generously. He will not rebuke you for asking. I've been feeling uh, kind of sentimental in the last few weeks, months, and, and uh, I've been itching to tell you one of our foundational Hanfield stories that we haven't told probably in 15 years. And so I thought this is a perfect time for it. And I've been thinking about this for months, that this would be the day. Tell you one of our favorite Hanfield stories a lot of you have heard it before, but it's good to review. Years ago, we were needing to either expand or relocate. We had a building fund. Funds were coming in slowly. And right in the middle of that, our missionary, John Enright, came for a missions conference, and he spoke at a Saturday men's breakfast, and he shared his vision of a conference center in, in the remote areas of, of southern Zaire, which is now Congo, in a village called Niembo. And he pulled me aside after the breakfast and said, maybe Hanfield would like to raise the $12,000 to build the chapel for the Niembo Conference Center. And I remember thinking, yeah, that's what we need to do. <laughs> we need someone to give us $12,000. We haven't even raised 10000 yet. How could we give away 12000 I didn't say that to John, of course, but that's what I was thinking. What I said was, we'll pray about it. <laughs> but I'm thinking there's no way. Now, just in case uh, you're wondering about Niembo, Niembo is in what's now Congo. You're familiar with Kafakumba, which is in Zambia, just south of Congo. Because many of you have been with me. How many have been with me to Kafakumba? Multiple times, some of you. So Kafakumba was modeled after Niembo. And Niembo is still uh, conducting conferences and so forth. It's just that you can't get to Niembo if you're white. You'll, you'll be killed. So we just can't get there. We can get to Kafakumba. Okay, that's a side. So that's what John told me. I'm thinking, yeah, there's no way. A few weeks later, I'm at youth camp, and it's a Tuesday night. I still remember that it being a Tuesday night, and uh, there weren't too many youth at the altar that night. I was the morning teacher. Ken Vance was the evening teacher, surely. And uh, after the uh, sermon, and Ken's a great preacher, typically there would be youth at the altar. Not this night, so I wasn't needed to pray and counsel. So I'm sitting at my seat and uh, praying about Hanfield. And the Lord spoke to me. I said, how do you know it's the Lord? I, I, there's probably about a, a less than a dozen times in my life I can tell you I know it was the voice of God. A lot of times, you know, you're not sure. But, but, I, but I have learned that it's the voice of God when it comes out of nowhere. 
and it's usually the opposite of what you want to hear. And it makes no sense. <laughs> That's how I determine that it's the Lord speaking. And, but the Lord spoke to me, and, and uh, he, he, this is what he said. Before you build the church at Hanfield, build the chapel in Niembo. And I said, no, Lord. <laughs> no, Lord. That's not how we do things. It's <laughs> not how it's done. We need someone to give us 12000 And I heard the voice again say, before you build the church at Hanfield, build the chapel at Niembo. Now, if the Lord repeats something to you, you know you either misunderstood him or gave him the wrong answer. Okay? <laughs> Just tuck that away somewhere in your notebook. Build the chapel at Niembo. And I know that many of you have wrestled with God, so you know the feeling of being oppressed there's just this burden that comes on you. You feel this, this cloud, kind of like, you know, smog or fog coming down on you. And, and this wrestling probably lasted only about five minutes. For me, it seemed like an hour. Why don't they finish singing that song so we can get out of here? I'm tired of this wrestling. And uh, so finally I did what I taught you to do. I said, yes, Lord. And immediately that burden lifted, and the cloud lifted, and it was sun shining again in my soul. And I found that I was getting excited at that point. But before I wanted to, to tell anyone at Hanfield, I, I wanted to check. I, I, I've learned that, that even if you're sure it's the Lord, it's good to find confirmation. Do you know what I'm talking about? So I went down to Winchester to, to my folks uh, after, after camp was over, and I wanted to check with my dad because he had the gift of discernment and Often the Lord would speak to him. So I told him the whole story I just told you. And I, I asked him, Dad, do you get any word from the Lord? And he said, I don't get a witness either way, son. Witness of the Spirit. But it just sounds like God. There is a way that seemeth unlikely. And many times, that's the wisdom of God. The writer of Proverbs says, Fear of the Lord teaches wisdom, and humility precedes honor. Chip Ingram, if I could quote him one more time this morning, gaining wisdom begins with humility. The opposite of humility, of course, is pride. 